Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Dotwoods 2 podcast. I have another exciting guest here today. I'm excited to pick her brain just about her involvement. Um, she is currently the president and co-founder of Q, Cedarville University Entrepreneurship Org. Um, she's a junior accounting and finance major here at Cedarville University. She is currently interning at Beyond Angels, and she is an officer of PDB Sorority as well as a member of the Women in Business Club. Annie, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you, just kind of pick your brain. Um, you were one of the probably first like business upperclassmen I actually like came to know at Cedarville, um, getting involved with Q really mm -hmm. early. Um, so I kind of want to start off with that, Q, since that's where I know you from. What was your inspiration with starting this club and just how it came to be what it is today? Mm -hmm. Good question. I so can see myself a lot in you in the fact that I was a driven, passionate, curious, on fire freshman when I came to Cedarville mm -hmm. and um, loved entrepreneurship from the beginning. But when I got here, I realized that there were limited resources for students who were passionate about entrepreneurship and um, had a hesitation of majoring in entrepreneurship or getting that in part of my degree because I thought it was more of a skill that you learn hands-on. And so I was just hesitant about that. And I know that entrepreneurs come in all different shapes and sizes and for lack of a better term, but um, they can be engineers or in the health department or anyone. And so it was limiting to think that only entrepreneurs could be out of the business department, but there was nothing to kind of pool everyone together. And so a group of friends and I who were all like-minded kind of had this dream to create a student-led org where this can be a solution for students who are also sharing the same dreams and desires and kind of bring the passion together so that iron can sharpen iron in that way. So with the help of Dean Haymond, who also had the dream, we were able to start this org. And I'm really excited because now freshmen coming into Cedarville can have what I wish I had, and it's still in the process of formation, obviously, and it's a really cool place to be because we can make it exactly what we want, and we're very flexible to the needs and demands of the members of the org, and so, yeah, it's just a really fun time to be able to um, give back and to see something that I wish I had when I was younger for other people to enjoy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely starting an organization like that. It's a long play. Like, it's not maybe fully formed to what it will be like when you're mm -hmm. here, um, which is a little unfortunate. But with a lot of things, it just takes time to build it. But it's also exciting, yeah, yeah to just watch it grow and see it kind of morph into the thing that everyone wants. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, for entrepreneurship, a lot of people have said, and the profs here at Cedarville have said that Gen Z is the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. like generation mm -hmm. in general. And there's a lot of, like, my cousin, he's at another school. He's really involved with entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're just seeing it grow everywhere. I'm glad Cedarville and Dean Heyman is actually, like, pushing and trying mm -hmm. for that, especially with Kerry Obergrunner coming yeah. in. Um, that's really exciting. So, yeah, so you have Q. Um, who is – I'm trying to think. So one big thing with Q, you guys have an event – that you put on and that's actually coming up here in about i don't know probably whenever this episode releases in like two weeks three yeah. weeks um can you tell me a little bit about that it's the pitch um mm -hmm. what it involves and how that came to be did that come through q or was that already established before the organization yeah so cedarville has had the pitch for a few years now and it was already a thing before q yeah. but there was a problem that each year when people were anticipating the pitch, it would be a new group of students who had to put it on and they kind of started from ground zero each time. And so the vision of Q was also to be able to um, provide certainty that this event will happen regularly. And so you don't have to wonder, is this gonna happen next year? Will there be the people to put it on? And is it worth it for me to 
run after this business idea for the chance to win or, um, yeah. So it was a thing before, but we've kind of adopted it with Q and are able to provide certainty and stability and improve on the org and be able to rinse and repeat each time. Yeah. I mean, I know whenever I kind of got involved over the fall, it was like it jumped right into getting mm-hmm. ready for the pitch because it's earlier in the semester. Mm-hmm. So it's like as soon as you're here, you have to go for it. Yeah. What was just the experience and like the turnout and probably just like the overall result mm-hmm. of the pitch in the fall? How do you think that went? Um, I definitely agree with you. It's very soon, like once we start semesters. And that's because later in the semester, people don't have as much time to pour into a business idea. Um but I think the turnout was good. We try to give exciting audience prizes, and that helps encourage people to come. And what the pitch is, is a Shark Tank-like presentation where students can present their business ideas with um, their slides and presentation and present to judges who are successful entrepreneurs or business owners and get real life feedback in front of an audience that they can enjoy as well. Yeah. Well, let's, let's switch gears a little bit. I um, just want to talk about, so you said you came to Cedarville as like mm-hmm. an on fire freshman, like mm-hmm. ready to get into the world and do business and learn about it at the school. Um, what was the process of just coming to Cedarville specifically? What made you decide that you wanted to come to Cedarville, and then you were also a varsity athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, just talk about the process of coming here and doing the sport and how that all turned out. So my parents both went to Cedarville. Okay. And for that reason, I did not want to come to Cedarville at all. But over a long period of time and lots of conversations, I came and visited. I feel like that's a lot of the second gen It is a lot uh, of stories. Yeah. A, yeah. Um, and so I visited and realized that this is a place for me because it's the people that I want to be best friends for life with. And it's a place that I will grow spiritually and um, mentally and academically. And I wanted to be like the people here at Cedarville. And so, yeah, that's kind of how the Lord led me here. And I was had the ability to be on the track and field team. And I met some of my greatest friends through that experience. However, I am no longer on the team because I just have a passion for being involved and saying yes to things. And some of my other ex- extracurriculars um, came in the way where I couldn't do it all and I had to sacrifice something. And so I decided to step away from the track and field team. Um, And it was a hard decision. I really missed the team and practice and everything that we did often. But it's also a big weight off my shoulders as to time commitment. Each day we would have practices from like 3.30 to 5.30, and then dinner right after, and then we would have track Bible studies. So, And then on weekends, we would have our meets, which were usually one to three days long, depending on the meet. So it was just a really hard time to be gone every single weekend and away from my friends who are here. Even though I had community on the track team, I felt like I would get a better, well-rounded experience if I took that step away. Yeah. And how do you think, for those who are um, interested in doing varsity sports Mm -hmm. and have the opportunity, do you like the fact that you did track and did it instead of not, Mm -hmm. and then were able to then fall away from it if you obviously found out that, like, there were other opportunities out there? Oh, yes. Yeah, I... Would my advice to freshmen would be to get involved in as much as possible you can your freshman year because you can always prune the bushes and drop things, Mm -hmm. but it's a lot harder to start adding things your junior and senior year. So I am so glad I was on the track team. It challenged me and grew me in ways that 
I could have never imagined. And I have amazing friendships that will last me for life. Um, and yeah, it was just an amazing community and I'm still in touch with them. Um, and support the track team 100 percent yeah yeah for sure what what exact uh i don't know too much about Mm -hmm. track so i'll probably just butcher asking this question but what exactly did you do for the track team like the events is that what Mm -hmm. events yeah what did you do yeah so i was classified as a multi so in high school i did the pentathlon which is my event consisted of five different track events and then in college it's the heptathlon and so my event consisted of seven events. And I don't know if you're familiar with the pentathlon, heptathlon, or decathlon, but those are all the multis. Okay. So the seven events that I did were high jump, long jump, shot put, 800, 100 hurdles, um, javelin, and the 200. So it was a lot. Yeah, it, you were like everything. That, yeah, wow. it's just a wide variety of events and Mm -hmm. then the way the event works is it's a point system so each event is compared to the world record and then depending on your score for that specific event you get a certain amount of points for it and then at the end of all the seven events your points are totaled and whoever has the highest amount of points wins that event. interesting mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's very interesting having so many different events would you argue you had to train more because you had such a wide variety of stuff or how yeah. would that work having so many more um i don't think i would necessarily necessarily say i had to train more it was at times more time consuming because i had to fit in all the different events but our bodies can ha- only handle so much at a time yeah. and so there was a level of difficulty that came where I wish I could have done more and I wish I could train longer, but your body just hits its limit and you can't. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely a challenging thing, but yeah, it was a lot, a ride trying to fit it all in, in yeah. the season. So, yeah, but so yeah, I guess, yeah, you move in now, junior year, um, you've stepped away from doing the track Mm -hmm. so you've gotten more involved you said you like to say yes to a lot of things Mm -hmm. um you're uh, an officer of peb Mm -hmm. um can you just explain a little bit about your experience with them and then you're also in women in business Mm -hmm. um just your experiences with these other orgs that you stepped into now yeah so peb um stands for phi epsilon beta and it has a special place in my heart um some of my best friends are from this org and especially the our class of 2025 is really close um but yeah basically what it is is a social service org or classified as one of cedarville's sororities and um we do service projects and group bible studies we host dances for um cedarville and we also just spend a lot of fun quality time together and grow that sisterhood mentality that is super cool to have um they are all sisters to me and it's just really cool to watch the growth that each of them has had spiritually and just in their character and academically and i'm so excited to see where everyone ends up um but yeah it's some my best friends are from that org and I would highly consider anyone new to Cedarville to check out the orgs on campus, any of the fraternities, sororities. Um, They're not like normal colleges. Yeah. Especially like the people that I know in the different sororities, one, there's rarely like from what I've seen, there's Mm -hmm. no like rivalry to an extent. Like there's fun, Mm -hmm. like there's fun games and stuff like that, but there's no rivalry. And then within the orgs, it's like, like real community. Like mm-hmm. you can just tell those people are yeah. in that together because uh-huh. they're just that close. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool to see that. Um, what like my friends and I, like we all are interested in a male org of some sort. Mm-hmm. Could we just know that there's another level of community beyond being like friends, yeah. having more set aside time to mm-hmm. work together with them. It's just, it builds you together in a certain no, way. No, it definitely is a way of uniting a group of people. And I would caution people too, 
Um, there's a lot of stereotypes around these orgs, especially mm-hmm. the fraternities and sororities. But um, like I think you've said on some of your other podcasts, like Brock has its own yeah. stereotypes. And so I would just be careful, like listening to definitely take it with a grain of salt because yeah. each person here at Cedarville has their own story is awesome in their own way. Yeah. And unless you really know firsthand, you can't, it's hard to judge something. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you first come in, you hear a bunch of things and yeah, obviously I heard a bunch of things about the guys and the mm-hmm. girls, the frats and sororities, but the f- first thing I did really was just talk to them. Like yeah. talk to you, talk to Madeline, um, Isabel a little bit mm-hmm. and just everybody's just like, what's it like? Some of my closest um, friends are in it as well, mm-hmm. Chloe and uh, Jenna. And it's just cool seeing how close you guys are. Like, obviously the stereotypes can hurt sometimes, but you're like, we're just really building a community together and that's what matters. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's just really inspiring to hear. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, so you're in PB. Um, now Women in Business is another yeah. org you're a part of. What's your experience with that? Yeah, so Women in Business is a cool org. We do monthly events. Sometimes we go to professors' houses. Sometimes we have speakers. Just kind of a chill, laid-back org to kind of um, – bring the women in the business department together. And yeah, I feel like all these orgs are just community of some sort. And so it's just another cool way to bring community within the business department between all the girls. So that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I think Q is the only like organization I've been a part of so Uh far, Um, just because I've uh, had other opportunities with uh, working for the school business Mm -hmm. and doing social media work and this, Um, but I think for those who can't, like, if you don't find ways to get fully involved on your own, an org will really help you get into that. I also want to talk a little bit, um, now you've had some other opportunities Mm -hmm. this year. Um, you have an internship. Could you just explain a little bit about what that is and who you're interning for and what you do there? Yeah. So I have an internship through Cedarville called Beyond Angels. Um, I work as a financial analyst and I also do the accounting internship that they offer Um, and it's such a great opportunity. I am so blessed that Cedarville has this offered. Basically what we do is um, analyze Christian startup companies that are seeking an investment and They are seeking this investment from Beyond Angels, which is a pool of angel investors Mm -hmm. who are also Christian. So it's just really cool that the Christian investors can invest into Christian companies that are trying to have a useful product or service, but also trying to further the kingdom of God on earth. And so, um, yeah, definitely such a great experience for my own business knowledge and being able to talk to the CEOs and founders of these companies and also get mentored by the different investors and kind of understand what they're looking for in a company that they're trying to invest in. So yeah, definitely a really great opportunity and something that if you're interested in entrepreneurship or yeah, just finance or anything like that, definitely a really great opportunity to get you aware of what's out there. Yeah, I know one of the first meetings, it might have been All Access Day. Cedarville mm-hmm. does like a, if you sign up early, you can come yeah. here and get your ID and stuff. And uh, one of the professors was talking about this uh, um, angel investment. Because I think, I can't remember the actual name that he used because the type of investment it is. That it was like some name. Venture that, Capital. Yes, Venture yes. Capital. My dad was like, Venture Capital. <laughs> And uh, so we talked to them about that and just asked some questions. And that was really intriguing because he was uh-huh. like, why wasn't this here when I was here? Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's an incredible opportunity. I know uh, uh, Mr. Weesey, I believe, yes. is involved with that. And my yep. dad knew him and uh, talked with um, him and then Andy, I know his son, and Evan. And uh, is Evan a part of that at all? understand he was in a different okay he was in a different internship group i remember but yeah um that's an exciting opportunity because i know a lot of people especially with the new i think now officially new investments org 
yeah. in the school business. Mm-hmm. They uh, got made official like in the past week, which is really exciting. Um, there's a lot of kids that are really like interested in that realm, like mm-hmm. finance, investing, looking at companies. Um, Cause people are just like, yeah, I really want to, I want to learn how to do stocks. I want to have that um, recurring um, income, um, passive income mm-hmm. um, while I'm doing whatever job I'm doing. And so I think having a school like Cedarville actually try to give people opportunities for that um, is essential because starting from scratch in those realms is difficult, mm-hmm. like in finance. Um, and I know there's a group that went on a field trip. It was a bunch of finance, I think freshmen. They went out yeah. with uh, Professor Guernsey and just went to, I think it was a bank, um, Chase, Chase Bank, I believe it was, mm-hmm. and just got to see what it was. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. I have something to speak on, on like that kind of topic. Mm-hmm. I feel like in, in the recent weeks, I've had multiple conversations about this. Um, we're in a very interesting phase of our life where we can often fall back on like why are we doing this like why are we here what are we doing Mm -hmm. and I feel like it's really important for us right now and whenever like as soon as you can just kind of understand your why and like why you're pursuing what you're pursuing and why you're doing what you're doing and why you're even at Cedarville yeah um because when you hit these hiccups or road bumps you have something to fall back on and So I think having these opportunities to see inside of like different orgs, like investments or going on field trips or internships that Cedarville provides or will help you get is really important to see what's the end goal kind of for you and what the path that you're pursuing is and why you want to do that. Because when you hit these hard times or, have to leave your family after summer or um, wanted to quit because college is hard. Yeah. It's so important to have that why to fall back on. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess stemming from that, like with all like being a finance major mm-hmm. and accounting, what realm, do you have any idea of what realm of business you want to do with that? Is this like accounting, finance, just knowledge for going on and working in a company? Like, do you have any visions for what you want to do after school? Yeah. So coming into college, I have just always been so passionate about business and all aspects of it. I feel like if you're entrepreneurial minded, you kind of like all the moving parts. Mm-hmm. But I chose accounting and finance because, well, originally I chose accounting and the finance double major is a new addition. but. Okay. Um, just because that's the language of business, if you can understand the numbers, you can understand what makes a business successful and yeah. what doesn't. And, um, you can observe successful businesses and ones that are struggling, and then you can kind of put two and two together of, okay, this is what makes a good business. This is what makes a average business. Okay. And no matter what I do, whether that's starting my own business or just playing an influential part of a company, I want to be able to take the skills that I've learned of what makes a successful business a successful business and apply those. So if that makes sense. And then I also love people, which is a very rare commodity for accountants. Accountants kind of have the stereotype of working a in a cubicle all day (laughs) yeah um not talking to anybody but my passion for business also allows me to um use my passion for people and just being able to help people that i work with or might work under me one day to help them reach their full potential and to have that influence on customers vendors employees that i might not necessarily have otherwise and to be able to show the love of christ to those people the way that they deserve to be treated so yeah i know that's um one thing i've come to find being at cedarville because my experience um is i've worked in and with my dad and his agency Mm -hmm. since i was in eighth grade so it's been almost six years now Mm -hmm. and especially with covid like that model's really moved to it's a 
fully remote okay. team. So it's like we have our office and everyone else is wherever they live. Mm -hmm. And so the only communication is really through like Zoom. Yeah. But like coming to Cedarville and it's just I can go like meeting. Like yesterday was crazy. It was like meeting and then podcast and then meeting. Uh -huh. And it was like, but I'm just with people and yeah. interacting with them and doing work. Uh -huh. Um, and I, I really enjoy that. I mean, I'm sure there's seasons of life where it's like maybe you're older and you're just like, man, I'm kind of annoyed with people a little bit. <laughs> but like at this age where I'm at right now, like I really enjoy mm -hmm. being with people, interacting. And like you don't have to be – like you can interact with people in business. It's not yeah. just like there's certain majors where it's like people and then not people. Mm -hmm. um, it's like whenever you're collaborating and making the workplace – a little bit like fun to an extent or like you enjoy it mm -hmm. um i'm reading a book it's called feel good productivity okay. um, it's this guy ali abdal he's one of like the most followed productivity experts on youtube and everything and he's like i mean obviously there's some aspects of work where it's just like it does kind of suck a little bit yeah work is work <laughs> it's but. but it's also can you find a little thing that you can tweak just to make it a little bit more enjoyable? Is it like, can you listen to music while doing this mm -hmm. one thing? Or is working on this project with people more enjoyable? Mm -hmm. Like, I love delegating and collaborating. Yeah. Like, I love having as many people in a project. Like, I don't want, like, if I'm building a brand, which right now I'm working on, like, a website and stuff, I want as many people in it as possible. I'm not just like, oh, I made it myself and all that. Mm -hmm. I just love, like, seeing the work from different people because mm -hmm. they all have their strengths. Yeah. It's so like I do podcast work like this and video work, but I wouldn't say I'm the best videographer. Like there are some guys here at Cedarville, they're really good. Um, and then there's people who can manage better probably too than me. But that's why I like working with all of them because mm -hmm. they bring their strengths together. And that's mm -hmm. what makes like a business and a team. Yeah. So Q is a part of that too. Like mm -hmm. we build our little teams and we're figuring yeah. out like how to work with different majors because my mm -hmm. team – I think it worked out that we have three business majors in my team and with the earlier organization it's mostly business people, mm -hmm. but we have one nurse. Mm -hmm. So just having that to yeah. work with as well. It's like, she's a hard worker yeah. and she's like, she knows how to work. Uh -huh. So having that perspective as a nursing major with us, um, it's really cool to see. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned perspective. And I think that's what's really important in having your team is having a community of people that have different perspectives and see the world different than you because it'll challenge you and help you grow and um, you're not so easy to jump to your first conclusions and your first solution um, but find the best solution for yeah. things so yeah like in the creative problem solving class yeah, so we have yeah. to do like 103 different ice cream mm -hmm. flavors um, that's kind of cool because I mean it's obviously it seems childish at first um, but it's like it's just going through the process of don't go for your first idea yeah. generally. Uh -huh. It's like, how many does it take to get to the actual, like, real idea? Um, especially in businesses and whatever you're creating, it's like the first is not the best generally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. No, it definitely is something that's joked about and frowned upon. But if you can really understand that concept, it is really important because mm -hmm. then you can be confident that whatever idea you choose to go with is actually the best idea. Yeah. So. Even if it's not the last one or the first one, maybe it's something in the middle. But, yeah, you exhausted your options. So. Yeah, you can feel confident in the fact that you took the time to understand. It's like, all right, we went through a lot of scenarios. This is mm -hmm. probably the one. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to switch gears a little bit, just um, provide value. Um, so Cooper, I talked with him a little bit about his time management because he, okay. he's still on the track team mm -hmm. and doing graduate work. And he was a science major environmental science yeah how has your experience been with just dealing with the time so uh -huh. you, as a track athlete now not but being uh -huh. involved in other things and how did you just actually study like actually do your academics with all the other things going on what were some things that really helped you yeah I am a list person okay. I love making lists I think it might be old school but it's Something that just helps you get your thoughts down on paper. You see what you need to do. And obviously, as you live your life, like things will come up and different things will take priority over your day. And just being able to be flexible to that, but get everything done that you need to get done. Um, but also having that time to be spontaneous. And yeah. Do the fun things that 
you're only here for four years, so it's okay if you don't get everything on your list done that should have gotten done, but as least as you can get the um, things done that you needed to get done. For yeah, the like the stuff that has a so, due date. Yeah. yeah, but it encourages you to work ahead and stay on top of your stuff if you can kind of visualize what your day's going to look like, what your week's going to look like, and just kind of the monthly tasks that you have yeah. coming up. So that would... Yeah, that's my yeah, so you, yeah, you go-to way. Run a list. Did you like segment it like day, week, month, or um, would you just? Are you the type? I know there's two types, and props kind of talk about it. There's those who look through the whole syllabus and plan out mm-hmm. the whole thing, or there's those who don't do anything. Um, I'm probably more in the middle, mm-hmm. where it's like I go in full semester planning. It's kind of like a lot. Yeah, like get a grasp of like, okay, this is one of my biggest thing in this class is yeah. probably. Um, like in principles of marketing, I got one of the case study okay. um, things. But uh, yeah, I think list, whenever you do your list, do you generally just write it down? Like, have you found writing it down has been better over digital or do you do it digitally? Um, this is probably something that I'm not proud of, but I tend to make multiple versions of the same list of okay. like on paper, on my phone. Um, and there's something just about like crossing something off that. Yeah. It makes you feel accomplished. Like a little but, dopamine hit or whatever. Yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm a big fan of Google Calendar. Mm-hmm. So I'll like time block things out in my Google Calendar. Um, but I journal. I don't know if you've heard of a bullet journal before. Mm. Basically, it's um, a blank journal and instead of having lines, it has dots. And so you can kind of go through it and make your own planner slash journal slash Mm -hmm. anything you want. It's very personalized. And so I bullet journal and have my, it's called a future log. And you have your whole year and all the months that you would make. And then um, I kind of do my life look at my life monthly and we'll take monthly assessments of what I need to do that month, what I have coming up that month and just evaluating myself that month, yeah. how I was in many different areas of my life and what I can improve on. And then, yeah, we'll look at break that month up into my weeks and then take my weeks day by day. So yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, yeah, I write my to do's in there and then just kind of transfer that onto my phone so it's with me okay yeah I mean I know um I didn't do it as my, I was almost always handwritten with a mm-hmm. lot of my stuff in high school mm-hmm. um I used a Franklin Covey planner going okay. off the uh principles of Benjamin Franklin okay because he he did this thing which I read part of his autobiography mm-hmm. where he would pick 12 things and work on them over a 12-week span mm-hmm. but each week was only focused on that one thing okay um, is the principle of just like working out one thing at a time. And if you focus mm-hmm. on the one thing, it will get better. But, uh, anyway, so yeah, I use that handwritten planner. Um, and then I switched over almost fully, like I don't have a handwritten planner at all, fully Google tasks okay. and Google calendar because yeah. Google tasks will show up on your calendar mm-hmm. and then you get the, That's nice. the check yep. and it's nice. Yeah. Um, cause sometimes like I used to set it as events. It's like, Oh, I needed to have this done mm-hmm. by that, but then it's just an event and there's no like check. Mm-hmm. I just have to delete it, mm-hmm. um, which is not like, not that little boost. So that's what I've been using. And it's actually, it's been super helpful. I did a speech um, for fundamentals of speech in the fall. And I talked about like, it was about time management. Mm-hmm. So you use this method. It's called the ABC okay. D method, where it's like you said, prioritize. Mm-hmm. What do you have to do? So deadlines, these are categorized as like A. Mm-hmm. And then B, it's like next level. C, and then D, it's like you probably don't need to do these. Just get yeah. rid of them. But or, if you have the time and the motivation. Yeah. It would well, it's like if, if they're fun, you'll uh-huh. do them. But if they're just like you thought about it, but it's not that important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's allowing yourself to not feel bad whenever you're taking a break. Because that's why I almost always work towards. It's like I just want to get this done so I can have my time yeah. to like have fun. Yeah. Um, I would say another one of my tips my friends and I have this app called Flora. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I haven't. No. Um, it's an app that kind of shuts down your phone mm-hmm. 
for a certain amount of time, you can like pick like 25 minutes, 35, 40, 45, an hour, whatever. Mm. And then just say what you're working on and the timer will go. But it's really fun because at the end of the timer, you it'll give you a plant <laughs> and you can like travel the world, like okay. getting to diff- collecting different plants mm. and you can see like what friends are studying on the app and you can mm. join into their study session yeah. um, or you can just see how many hours a week you've been studying, which mm. is also really encouraging. But I think one of the biggest things for me is when I'm in the zone of that 45 minutes, I get a lot done. Yeah. And when my phone's not a distraction to me, because if you, that timer's running on the app, but if you leave the app, it will kill your plant. And so (laughs) it's not that big of a deal, but it's just a good encouragement to like stay off your phone until the 45 minutes is over and you just get so much done. And Mm -hmm. then you can take your five, 10, 15 minute break and come back refreshed and, but still motivated to work on what you've been working on. So that's a really fun app that. I think it's cool. You can do it with friends too. It's a little yeah. bit of an accountability or like fun. It's like, yeah. I got more plants than you. Even and though it sounds stupid, it's yeah. like, it's still fun. And especially during finals week too, like you can see my roommate's a bio major. And so she was studying OCHEM and I'm like, oh, she's studying OCHEM, but I could join her study yeah. session and work on one of my classes. And it's just fun to see that someone was there and you can comment on your session and oh, okay. yeah it's just fun because you can see hmm. how many hours they've put in you can yeah. compete you can yeah so that's cool yeah i think that's learning how to time manage especially with phones i mean there's so many easy distractions mm-hmm. i won't say like these days but there just are right yeah. now and where we're living um and having the phone find out ways to turn it off because they're like you can set certain locks mm-hmm. And then some of them are really easy to get out of and some of them aren't and trying to figure out what works best for you. Yeah. I know some people like um, even just where you study. Like I try to never study in my room. Yeah. I keep it as like a no work spot Mm -hmm. unless I need to like upload something um, just because it's a separation. But I know some people, they're like, they live there. Mm -hmm. That's all like they're always in there, always studying, especially like a lot of people like nurses who really have so much. They just burrow in there and like, we have so much to do. Yeah. No, it's definitely fun to change your location up. Yeah. And, um, yeah, try to make studying. That's what's fun about the app is it adds a little bit of joy to yeah. doing your work. And so if you can find ways to make studying more enjoyable and enjoy the process, yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. Makes then, it like, better. Switching locations. We'll have the new business building yeah. <laughs> next year, which yeah, will be fun. I can't wait. I like this. I like having natural light and a little bit of noise. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I can't really do the bottom of the library. Like having absolute science wigs me out. Yeah. Um, Because I'm used to like, I'm homeschooled. So I have, Mm -hmm. I'd have four siblings. I was just used to noise. Mm -hmm. Um, So it never bothered me. And now I realize like I have to have noise. So that's that's what I'm used to. So it'd be cool to see that open environment in the new business building. Yeah, I can't wait. So. All right. Well, we've been running for like 45 minutes. So I think I might end it for today. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on. I was glad we were able to talk about all this and just learn Mm -hmm. about like you have a lot of different experiences. Um, Like just inform me and inform others. Um, Anything you want to say about the pitch coming up um, for anybody who might be interested in uh, seeing it? Yeah, uh, definitely apply. There's still, well, maybe when this video comes out, there won't be any time, but Um, come to the pitch, see what it's about. Um, yep. We live stream it. So if you're not at Cedarville, um, watch it online and think of an idea for the next pitch. Yeah. There's so much opportunity out there. And I am just excited to see what entrepreneurs here at Cedarville can do. Yeah. So. Yeah, me too. It'll be uh, February 2nd. I believe the uh, doors open. If you uh, show up in person, doors open at about 6 p.m., I think, mm-hmm. something like that. There's a pre-show beforehand. Um, there will be giveaways, and you'll just be able to see entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs uh, promote their product and their brand and see if judges like it. But all in all, it'll be fun and a great time. Thank you guys for checking in. Uh, please uh, check out Annie down in the description, all the socials, everything Cedarville. And uh, thank you guys for watching.
Bye.